so far we've discussed all the structures that we have on the inside of our cell so now we're going to look at what structures we have on the outside of our cell so here's the extracellular structures Right, so extracellular structures are components and connection between cells that help to coordinate cellular activities. So most cells synthesize and secrete materials that are external to the plasma membrane. So these are the, uh, the materials, the substances that make our extracellular structures. So we have a few of extracellular structures that we're going to discuss in this part, and they are the cell wall of plants, the extracellular matrix or ECM in the animal cells and also the cell junctions. Okay, so we're going to look at the uh, cell wall of plants first. So the cell wall is an extracellular structure that distinguishes plant cells from animal cells. Um, not only plants uh, would have the cell wall, but also other organisms such as prokaryotes, fungi, and some proteins. It's just that they differ in the type of materials uh, that you can find in the cell wall. Now, the function of cell wall in plants, number one, is to protect the plant cells. Second, to maintain its shape. And thirdly, to prevent excessive uptake of water. Now, plant cells are made of this main component called the cellulose fibers, and they are embedded in other polysaccharides and also proteins. So you've learned about cellulose, uh, the structure of cellulose back in chapter one. So as you can remember, cellulose is the structural polysaccharides made up of uh, uh, repeating glucose monomers. Now, um, so cell wall of plants may have multiple layers, all right? So the primary cell wall uh, is produced by the growing plant cells, okay? And they are thin and flexible. So the reason why they are thin and flexible is to allow uh, the, the plant cells to grow, right? Um, the next one, we have middle lamella. So in between two plant cells, so we have a, a, a layer called middle lamella. So middle lamella consists of a thin layer. It's a thin layer, okay, rich in pectin. So pectin is a polysaccharide, okay, it's a sticky polysaccharide uh, that glues adjacent cells together. Okay, and the last one is the secondary cell wall. Uh, secondary cell wall is deposited in several laminated layers and they are strong and durable for cell protection and support. So usually secondary cell wall is secreted once the cell uh, stop elongating. Okay, so we do have another structure over here called the plasmodesmata, uh, which are the channels uh, that you can find between adjacent plant cells. But we're going to uh, discuss plasmodesmata uh, much detail uh, later in this in this part yeah okay now look at this diagram okay so this is the uh, uh, it's a more uh, focused uh, diagram a bit of two plant cells okay so let's say we maybe we can put here cell one over here and this one is cell two plant cell number two, all right? So the first thing that you must notice is uh, the, the, the layer, the thin layer in between the two cells. So this is called the middle lamella. So remember just now, okay, middle lamella, okay, is rich in polysaccharide called the pectin, right? The pectin, okay? So pectin is the sticky uh, substance that glues the cells together. All right, so now we can have uh, now we can see the two cell wall. All right, so which one is which? I know it has been uh, labeled to you, but to distinguish and to differentiate uh, the two cell walls, you just need to see the thickness, okay, of the of the cell wall. So if you look here, so this is a is quite thin uh, layer or or wall or cell wall so definitely this is the primary cell wall because remember uh, just now primary cell wall is thin and flexible right and of course definitely uh, the thick one is the secondary cell wall over here okay all right okay so that's all for plant cell wall now we're going to look at what we have uh, in the in the animal cell okay Right, so this is called the extracellular matrix. Okay, extracellular matrix. Um, so because animal cells lack 
the cell wall, but uh, animal cells are covered by an elaborate uh, structure called the extracellular matrix called the ECM. So these are the components of ECM. So the first one is the collagen. So the collagens are fibers embedded in the web of proteoglycan complexes. So I think everyone you know, you must heard about collagen before. So uh, collagen is one of the most abundant protein in our body. Okay, so proteoglycan complexes. Okay, so you can, uh, there are hundreds of proteoglycan, which are the small core protein with many carbohydrate chain covalently attached to it. And these attached to a single long polysaccharide molecule. So we're going to see the structure of proteoglycan uh, next in the next slide. And the last one is the fibronectin. So the function of fibronectin is to attach the ECM to the integrins that embedded in the plasma membrane. Again, we're going to see the integrin uh, later, All right? Okay, so now we're going to look at the structure of a proteoglycan. So remember, proteoglycan is uh, the second component in the table just now. All right, so proteoglycan is... The, uh, is um, it's a combination okay, between protein and also carbohydrate. So you can see uh, this is the long single polysaccharide molecule. All right. And you can see a lot of branches over here. So the you know, if we take one of these, if you take one of these, okay, you can see the purple color uh, strand. Okay, this is the this is the core protein, and all the small branches in green color is is the carbohydrate chain. All right. So the basic proteoglycan unit uh, would consist of this. So this is one proteoglycan unit. So you have a core protein just now, and the many carbohydrate chains attached to it. All right. So this carbohydrate chain are called the glycosaminoglycan or GAG. So glycosaminoglycan is a is a polysaccharide made of a repeating disaccharide unit. Right. Um, I think we have around four groups of GAG, okay, and one of them is called the chondritin sulfate. Okay. Right. So here is the structure of ECM, okay, on the outside of animal cells. So you can see the two animal cells over here. All right. So we have the collagen, and these are the proteoglycan complexes. So if we look in detail of the proteoglycan, so you can see the uh, GAG. Uh, chain, right? So just now I, I mentioned that GAG is made up of a repeating disaccharide unit. So this is the disaccharide unit. Okay, All right. So we have another structure that involved uh, in the ECM and they are the integrins. So integrins are the two subunits, right? Are the two subunits of membrane proteins uh, and they bind with ECM on the outside and also attached to the microfilament on the inside. Now, integrin is actually uh, originate from the word integrate. Okay, integrate. So, you, so basically, this describes what integrins do. So, integrins uh, integrate. Okay, so integrins integrate um, the changes okay, that happen on the outside, on the outside and inside cell, of cell, yeah? Okay, uh, and also integrins is in the position to transmit signals between uh, ECM, okay, and also the cytoskeleton inside because uh, integrins attach to both of them. So they can actually relay uh, any signals uh, between ECM and also the cytoskeleton uh, from the inside of our cell, right? So, yeah, so that is our ECM. Okay, so you can see, you can look at the all the structures that we have discussed just now. Um, so we have, sorry, so we have uh, the protoglycans over here, and then we have the collagen, the fibronectin that attach the ECM to our cell, and these are the integrins. So remember, integrins is the two subunit of membrane protein. Now, so in general, um, ECM function in our cells communication uh, and also uh, ECM uh, provide essential structural support for our cell and then ECM also uh, regulate other processes like cells growth, uh, migration and also differentiation. 
Okay, so next one is the cell junction. So neighboring cells in tissue, organ, and organ systems often adhere, interact, and communicate through direct physical contact. So we are going to discuss uh, several types of cell junctions here. So we have plasmodesmata and three uh, cell junction in animal cells, which are the tight junction, uh, desmosome, and also cap junction. Okay, so we're going to look at the cell junction in plant cell first. So this is called the plasmodesmata. So plasmodesmata uh, is the plural noun. Okay, so this is the plural noun. For singular, it's known as plasmodesma. Right, plasmodesma. Okay, so plasmodesmata are channels that perforate the plant cell wall. Not only that, but they also connect uh, cytoplasm between adjacent cells uh, together. Okay, so through these channels, um, water and small solutes uh, like ions and sometimes protein and RNA can pass and, and move from cell to cell. So you can see uh, the plasmodes mata over here so it is like a tunnel okay or, or channels okay uh, that connecting two cells together all right okay so here is more clear uh, diagram of a uh, plasmodesma all right so you can see the plasmodesma right in between the two cell the two cells here over here okay and you can see it connecting okay the cytoplasms together so that's why, you know, um, any materials from cell one, okay, can pass through the plasmodesma uh, and, and go to the cell number two and vice versa, right? So they can basically exchange uh, materials um, through this plasmodesmata, right? So, so this allow plant cells to communicate with each other. Okay, through this specialized opening, uh, what we call as the plasmodesmata, where the cytoplasm of adjoining cells are connected. All right, so that's uh, what we have in the plant cell. Now we're going to look at the cell junction in animal cells. So we have three of them, and the first one is the tight junction. So tight junction uh, are the areas of tight connections between membranes of adjacent cells. So there's no space, uh, they are so tight uh, together, so there's no space remaining between the cells. So there's one uh, significant okay, of this, which is to prevent uh, any leakage of extracellular fluid and substances between cells. Now you can see um, an example over here. So this is actually um, what we call as the blood-brain barrier. Okay, so this is the blood-brain barrier. Okay, so you can see the blood vessel over here. So this is the blood vessel. Alright, so this is the endothelial cells that line our blood vessel, okay, and this is the brain. You can see this is the a part of our brain. Now you can look, I hope you guys can see, so you can look over here between the two endothelial cells. So these endothelial cells are very tight together, okay, and this uh, tightness, <laughs> these uh, structures, okay, are so tight due to the tight junctions over here. So this is to prevent any unwanted uh, materials from the blood, okay, uh, passing through the endothelial cells and goes into our brain. Okay, All right. So that is the tight junction. Okay, next, uh, we have the desmosome. So desmosome is the anchoring junction. Okay, so they are the points of attachment between cells and one function is, uh, one of the main function of desmosome is to fasten the cells together into strong sheets. Um, so substances can still pass freely through the spaces between the plasma membrane. So this um, space, this small space that allow uh, um, passing through of substances is called the intercellular space over here. All right, so intercellular space over here. Okay, so this is what the desmosome is. So you can see some of the structures. Um, I think one of the distinct and unique um, feature of uh, desmosome is that they anchored to intermediate filament. So you can see like this is this is like a hair-like uh, projections coming up. So these are the intermediate filaments, uh, basically made of keratin. 
All right, so it's easy to identify uh, desmosome because of the intermediate filament. All right, in, and then we have uh, in, in between this cell, so we have uh, what we call as the linker glycoproteins. All right, okay, so that's, uh, that is the desmosomes. Okay, and the last one uh, are the gap junctions. So gap junctions, also known as the communicating uh, junctions, uh, they provide cytoplasmic channels uh, between adjacent cells. Okay, and they allow the transfer of small molecules and ion between adjacent cells. Right. So, gap junction is actually very similar to the plasmodesmata in plant cells. So, they are very similar in function. It's just that plasmodesmata is found in, in plant cell. Um, meanwhile, gap junction is found in uh, animal cell. All right. So, here is the gap junction. So, here are the gap junctions. Okay, so you can see here. These are the connexons. So connexon is one, one channel. One channel uh, is called the connexon. So connexon is actually an assembly of six proteins called connexin. All right. It's a cylinder-shaped uh, tunnel. Okay, it's an assemble of six proteins uh, shaped like cylinder. And each one of the protein is called connexin. All right. Okay, um, and then our cell also can control the passage of materials uh, between cell by closing or opening the connexon. Okay, okay, guys. So make sure that you guys can um, can identify each one of these uh, cell junctions. It's very important. Okay, so you can see this is the tight junctions where you can see the cells are very tight. Uh, with each other. Okay, and for desmosome, it's very easy to identify because you can see the hair-like projections coming out. So these are the uh, intermediate, intermediate filament just now. And then we have this, these small channels, okay, uh, between cells, and these are the gap junction, all right? So they are very easy to, uh, to recognize. Okay. So again, uh, structures of the three animal cell junctions. All right. So the tight junctions, uh, desmosomes, and also cap junctions. All right. So that's all for the extracellular structures. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.